still working. We are going live on uh, YouTube. All right, let me just switch screens. There we go. Everyone's being live streamed. Cool. Oh, and one thing uh, later, if it's not already in there, let's make sure the link uh, to the slides is included on the YouTube stream. Okay, I will. I will try to get there. You bet. Okay. All right. So we are live on YouTube, and uh, I'll welcome everybody to our to our our second workshop of the uh, OSCC uh, Community Conference. OSCC Mean Open Simulator Community Conference. And today we have a presentation by David Fleeson who also works with Avicon, the group that helped organize the conference. And uh, David is gonna talk to us today uh, in a workshop titled Walking the Dead. Uh, just a couple of uh, ground rules here uh, in order to help uh, prevent any uh, Zoom bombing. Uh, I'll ask people who are in the Zoom meeting to uh, use the raise hand tool and uh, I'll use that to indicate and I'll give you permission to speak and turn on your web camera. And then other than that, I think, uh, I think David, the floor is yours. Okay. Hey, thanks. Yep. Hi, thanks for coming. Um, first off, uh, let's talk a little bit about ground rules so you know what's going on before we start the uh, workshop. Um, this is the website I think I'm sharing on my screen uh, that you went to when you signed up to attend. And if you notice in here, um, there is a download slides link. Uh, I would request if possible, if you can go there and download the slides. This way you have something to walk away with and it'll give you the information that we covered during the, um, the presentation. And some of it is also exploratory. There's some links in there that if you wanna go and learn more about things, you can, okay? So um, that's enough on that. Let's go to the slideshow and switch. Devices. Okay. All right. So, Walking the Dead using motion capture to reanimate life. That's what we're going to talk about today. So, I, I do work in animation. I'm an animator and a virtual world connoisseur. Um, I want to, I, I figured with everything that's going on with the metaverse, there's a lot of things with technologies right now that are good to look at. Motion capture is really taken off in some exciting ways. So, I wanted to share that and share some resources and some thoughts on animation as well. So first off, it all starts with a thing called computer vision. Uh, there's two essential technologies, as you see listed here, deep learning and convolutional neural networks. Um, they basically uh, shape this. Um, you know, if we take a look at it, basically AI enables computers to think and computer vision enables them to see, observe, and understand. So it's a matter of the computer being able to look at something and understand what it means and make decisions off that or make recommendations off of that. So as you see here, IBM defines computer vision as a field of AI or artificial intelligence that enables computers and systems to derive meaningful information from digital images, videos, and other visual inputs, and then to take actions or make recommendations based on that information. So one, one of the findings, I always look for things that can be useful um, to a community that is a very open source focused. So I try to look for open source tools. Sometimes it's easier to do than others. In this case, this one I thought was open source, but it's actually just free to use right now. I believe this is uh, from a, um, a student while he was uh, working on his degree he put together some technology that he's developing. So it's still in a developmental stage, but it's pretty good and it shows a lot of promise and it, it shows a bit of where things are moving in the future. You know, we just talked about computer vision. I mean, we, we, we see computer vision all around us. You know, if you sit here and you look at your phone, like I go to my iPhone and I'm sitting here and I'm texting somebody and guess what? I can look like a fox. I can put a fox over my face and it, its lips move instead of mine, you know, and, uh, it, you know, it, it's all synced up to me because it looks at my mouth, it looks at my eyes, my nose, the shape of my face, my chin, and it's able to correlate all that data and understand the meaning of what those things represent. So that's how, that, that's one way that computer vision is working and how it, it relates to motion capture. So in this case, move me, what this, this, this gentleman's done is he has taken that he has made the programming with the, um, he's made it so that you can take regular commonplace video and turn it into motion capture. 
that's really impressive, you know? Um, so if you play around with it, it doesn't quite work the way you want it first, realize this is quite a leap forward. So even if it's not 100% yet, it shows a lot of potential. Now here it gets some instructions and I will tell you, if you see this ninja here, that's not the way to dress when you do it, okay? Because that ninja is dressed in black and this doesn't really care for black or white too much or even probably shades of gray. It's more into colorful types of things that make you stand out from the background. And I have some steps here, which you can review. And like I said, this is all in the slides, which you can download from the website uh, that you use when you registered for the, for the conference, um, the conference.opensimulator.org page. And um, uh, it gives you all the steps right here. Like one thing is you have to stay on frame and you have to be fully on frame when you start in standing position. So it does have restrictions. I also think it was like maybe 15 seconds worth. You can't go much longer than that. Uh, so it's got limitations. But then again, this is, you know, to kind of tease us with a free to use one. And then later, hopefully, it'll become much more powerful when he's uh, charging for the service. Excuse me, Dave. Yeah. I uh, neglected to start the Zoom recording. So please forgive me. There'll be a little announcement when that starts. Okay. So should I start over again now? No, I think, please proceed. That should be fine. No, I mean, if you need to get the whole thing, I'll go back. I don't mind. Uh, I think, uh, no, let's keep going with your okay. schedule. We'll, we can cover it later. Okay. All yeah. right. All right. So um, so we, we did have it the whole YouTube time, just not the whole Zoom time, right? Recording. Correct. Okay, good. Okay. Okay. So to show you a little bit about Move Me, and you can see me here in my M&M uh, uh, pajama bottoms and <laughs> green shirt. Um, I, um, this is what the tool looks like that he put together right now. You can go to the site and let me get you the website again, the web address. Uh, I said, got it on that. Okay. You can see it here on the, the bottom. It's getmoveme.com. Okay. So if you want to test with it yourself, you can, that's part of what a workshop is, is you're trying it out too. Um, so you, you can see here. This goes by step by step. It's pretty straightforward, but I'll just go over it here and then I'm actually gonna demo it for you, partially anyways, because it does take a while to actually have it um, capture the motion capture for you in a meaningful way. So uh, we start off by just going add media in the file menu. And then we come down here to where the number two is and we're going to set what we wanna capture. Do we wanna capture the body? Do we wanna capture the facial mo movements? You know, you can do one or the other, both. Uh, what quality do we want? We want low, medium, or high. And it's kind of like with virtual world browsers, going high isn't always the, the best answer. You got to test it and see, and see what works best. Um, and then number three here, we go and we click this button that says capture, and that brings up a capture window. And then we have to click capture a second time, and then it'll start playing here, and it'll do things in passes. So it's going to capture maybe all the facial movements and it'll go all the way through that and maybe get to about halfway. And then I'll go through and do all the body movements. So it's actually using that computer vision to be able to tell where the head is, where the body is, where the, you know, the torso, where the, the legs are, the hands, and be able to correlate that to the rig. And then um, once we're done with this and it's captured everything, then we have an option to almost like running a server we're going to start this thing up to activate render view. So we're starting up a service and then we can play the animation on that service. But when you're done with it, you wanna deactivate the render, uh, the, the render view because that's taking up your resources. So, um, and then you don't have to play it back, but if you play it back, you'll see it in this, this side here. So it'll show you what it's captured and you can compare it to what it was in the original. Then we come over uh, back up to the top where we started for one and right next to it, we have one for export. And then this window will pop up that we just basically choose the file name and the export location. And when we're all done, it'll say motion data is successfully exported. Now I will warn you when, when I was doing this on my computer, it put this window behind the screen that I was using for move me. So I had to minimize this to be able to see that. But again, it's you know early development of the software. Uh, there's a number of file formats. Um, I know FBX is one. That's the one I choose to use the most. 
If you're looking for its use in places like OpenSim and Second Life, it doesn't export out to BVH because that's a very specific format to those worlds and not as much into um, what most other applications would use. Yeah, thanks, Dave. Mike Higgins asked, uh, what file format does it export to? And so yeah. I think you clarified so, that. Yeah, FBX and, and, and the, so, um, so we have that there. And then um, I'm going to give you a demonstration of this. So let's go to move me. Okay, and here's the move me screen. All right, so what I do is, again, just like I did on the screen for you, I'm going to show you inside of Move Me. We're going to add the media. And I did it in black and white here, but I want to do it in a color version. So I'm using my color version. Let you all see me in my m and pajamas. <laughs> so here I am in my backyard. Um, I'm doing a thing here that I play with my dog. I got a little Yorkie um, honey bear, and she loves to be chased around the yard. And what I do is I do this thing, zombie needs puppy brains. And she just loves it so much. She starts running all around trying to, she gets behind me. And then I do that thing kind of like in, um, if you remember Monsters, Inc. I do that thing where, where did she go? I don't see her anywhere. So, and I tried it with her in the scene and I tried it with her out of the scene. I, I think, I'm not exactly sure, but I think it's better for, for the technology to restrict it to just the one actor so that you don't confuse the optics. So as you can see here, I'm, I'm playing back my motion of, of the zombie looking for the puppy. Okay, I, I won't show you everything, but there, there you go to show you a little bit of it. So the next thing I do is I come here and I can say body. I can also capture the face. And you see when I press face, it added the facial uh, part of the rig to it as well. And then I have accuracy. It starts on low, but I'm going to kick it up to high. And well, actually, I'm going to try it on low this time to see what happens. Maybe it'll rig it real quick. Um, you can do custom capturing, but I'm going to leave that be. And then I come here to capture. And you have to press the capture button on this one as well. Now it's loading the materials. Yeah, it's going a lot faster because I went on low. So you can see how it's capturing it. It says in the bottom here, face capture. So it's going to go through and I got a status bar and it'll show me as it goes all the way through. When I actually recorded this thing uh, and did the, um, the capture for the file, this probably took me an hour and a half for the 15, it was a little less than a 15 second clip, 14 second clip. Okay, so, but when it's all the way done, if I let it play out all the way, but for time's sake, I'm not going to do, do that with y'all, is uh, right here, you would see the animation and you could put it into, you activate your render view, and then you would play your animation and it would play out in this right hand side here. So remember, if you put it into activate, always best to turn it off. It's kind of like a um, almost like a server, you, you know, like when you when you stand up in open sim grid, you want to turn it off when you're done using it. Same kind of thing. So when I'm all done and I just want to export, and I don't even have to preview it like I did. I could have just gone here to export. You go to export and it'll ask you what kind of an armature. If you click here, you have a meta rig, you have a basic human rig, and then you have a human rig with the head controls. So because I did the facial, I'm going to go with that one. And I just give it a location and I export, okay? Any questions on that before I go on to the next section? No, nothing in chat yet. So I, I think it's pretty clear. Okay. It's pretty self-explanatory. The only thing is it, it's hard to get the results you're after. But like I said, early days, I think it has a lot of, a lot of potential with movement. Okay, so let's go to the next one. All right, this is Mixamo. Oh, uh, Dave, here's a question. Um, from I don't know. You do some tests and you'll see how, how it does the uh, names on it. Dave, did, uh, excuse me, Mike had a question actually. And uh, actually there are a few questions in chat. So um, okay. uh, what from Mike Higgins, what bone name standard does it use? Yeah, as far as the bone names, I don't know. I didn't look at it that closely, but I will be bringing it up on screen. Uh, try, yeah, I'll bring it up on screen for you so you'll be able to see the bone names when I bring when I'm importing it in. Okay. okay. Yep. Uh, jitter and noise, I didn't really notice. 
I wasn't quite getting the results I wanted yet. So it wasn't an exact replication. It was close, but it wasn't quite exactly. The, the one problem I did see with it is, and you'll see a little bit as I play the animation for you as I'm importing it, it doesn't move the, the it doesn't move the avatar, the character in the scene. It just has them movements, but it doesn't have them physically moving within the 3D space. So you'd have to animate that yourself, I think, or that might just be a thing that's still being developed. Okay. So the second one I wanted to show you is Mixamo. Um, this is a company that was um, separate from Adobe at first and Adobe saw it and they, they liked what they saw. So they bought it up. They broke up the pieces. Some of them are available, some aren't. I mean, they used to have Fuse, which was really cool too, but now it's very limited. Um, but you know, now Adobe's going in different directions with uh, Mixamo and it's integrated with Arrow, as you'll see in a minute here as well, which is their AR app. Um, but the nice thing with this is it gives you a motion capture library along with 3D characters that you can use. Now, you'll need to check the rights to see, you know, for your application if it's okay to use it that way, obviously. But it's really nice. And I think there, I think it's still free to sign up for an Adobe account. If somebody knows different, please, you know, type in our local chat. But I think if you don't have an Adobe account already, you can probably sign up for one for free and still be able to use Mixamo without, because this is a free service, not a paid service. Personally, I, I pay for Adobe every month, so I've got it on, on, under that. But let me show you what this is like. Oh, and you'll see here that these are the formats that this exports out to. So FBX, Colada. So you can export the models out if you want to use them for Open Simulator or Second Life as well. Um, okay, so let's go over here to Mixamo. So um, I'm in here and I got my doctor, uh, but you know, I, I don't know if I want to use the doctor. So up in the top here, you have characters and you have animations. So I'm on Adobe's Mixamo site now, and, um, and this is just Mixamo.com. Um, I can do a search here for the type of uh, 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 character I want to use. And in this case, I guess, well, why don't we do a zombie, right? Since we're talking zombies. They got all kinds of horrible looking zombies. Uh, let's try the Girl Scout. <laughs> this one's hilarious. All right, it's not the same kind of Girl Scout that they had when I was a kid. Uh, all right, look at that. She's even got a baseball bat. <laughs> Slugger, okay. So um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna animate this. So, uh, so we go up here to, we have characters. We have another one here for animations. And I typed in zombie already, I got it in there. But you can also, as you notice here, you can also restrict it if you want it only to be combat ones, adventure, whatever. You can you know, do that as well. Let's say we have her do a zombie scream, okay? So there she is doing her zombie scream. Now, if, I, if, if left and right, I want to flip, because some of these are more specific. So let's say we want it to be a left-handed person instead of a right-handed person. I can click on this thing for mirror and it'll flip it over to the other side. You don't notice it as much with this one though because both hands are doing almost the same thing. Uh, you have trim here where you can change the length of this where it's starting point and ending point are. Uh, what's really nice though, whenever you get an animation is if possible, get the first frame and the last frame the same. Otherwise you'll have to weave that if you want it to be seamless later, if you're gonna loop it. Um, you have character arm spacing. So if I want her arm spaced way out, I can do that. Um, and that's very important because some of these characters like, you know, here we have a little girl, but let's say it was an older woman with uh, rather large breasts. Well, we don't want the arms going through the breast when she's doing the zombie scream. So you might have to, you know, get the spacing changed for that. And then the overdrive is the speed of it. If you want it very fast, or maybe she's just a very slow zombie, okay? So you, you can set things up just the way you want with this, but let's say you have your own character and you wanna bring it in. You got an option right here, you see underneath the download button to upload character. And it'll actually go through and allow you to get your character rigged by Mixamo. 
that's a really awesome thing too. It takes a little bit to get used to. Uh, you're basically just going to put points for different parts of the head and things like that in the body. And um, it takes a little bit of experimentation to get it to work right. And the other one here is if you ever want to take your stuff and also use it in augmented reality, send to Arrow. It'll send it to the Arrow app. And then you can use Adobe Arrow to, um, to output it uh, on augmented reality. And that's on things like smartphones and tablets and things like that. So when I finally got her just the way I want, I just hit download and I picked the formats. In this case, I just probably go for FBX binary. I could do that or Unity. They have one for as well. They also have the FBX ASCII. And you got a couple different versions of FBX as well as Collada. Collada obviously would give you something that you could use in Open Simulator and Second Life, uh, but it um, won't export. I don't think Collada. Does Collada have animations? Well, it looks like it. Well, no, wait a minute. I didn't get to select Collada. Oh. Let's try this once. I'm a little curious. I can't get it to select Collada. I guess it's not eligible for Collada because I have the animation in here. I was guessing that Collada is just mesh without the animation. So, um, and then the skin, do you want it to have the avatar or not? I usually like to bring it in because I can always take away the, the, the avatar afterwards, at least that way I can see it. And then uh, uniform or non, you know, I just leave these on defaults. Frames per second, what basically these are, 24 is what they use in Europe for uh, broadcast quality. 30 is what we use for broadcast quality in the United States or 29.97, same thing pretty, pretty much. And then 60 is what they use for VR. So depending on what, what, what you're using it for, but I'm just gonna leave, leave it on defaults and then I'd hit the download link. So that's how Mixamo works. All right, so I mean, since I'm gonna go in and show you how to animate zombies, I thought it'd be kind of cool to show you what I do to make zombies in the first place, you know, cause that's kind of the secret sauce, so to speak. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you inside of here. So this guy here, Alessandro, I think it is, and he was actually a free, a free, uh, asset that, that, that they're providing to their customers right now. But I took him and I turned him into this guy here, my little zombie guy. Okay. And I'm going to show Excuse you a little me, bit Dave. about how I do that. Yeah. Uh, a question from Al Scotch, uh, no BVH export for mixing no. up. Now, as far as I know, BVH is only used by Second Life and OpenSim, which is putting it a bit behind the times, in my opinion. Um, it's not a format that's openly used in the community. Now, the NIM format is used by Autodesk, and that has more potential. We're get, we'll get into that one a little bit later when I talk about Ally's work for uh, uh, the, the community and what he's doing in Blender. So... Now reply. Um, so why are we here? <laughs> yeah, well, I ask myself that's that up to you. Every day. <laughs> that that's up to you. You know, <laughs> it's all a choice. So, um, so this is a snapshot view of how it started and how I created the avatar or the three D character. So with Character Creator three, it's very similar to some of the virtual worlds in that you have a marketplace, and you also have in this case a content store. They're two separate places. One is. Um, one is um, uh, done for developers when they first start, which is the marketplace. And then once they've sold enough things and become well-established, that's when they can uh, sell things inside of the content store. So that can be things like clothing, vehicle, hair, plugins, poses, animations, all that kind of stuff. Now, one of the really nice things is they're coming out with a new version of Character Creator and iClone that's being released in the first quarter of next year. So that's really uh, ha has a lot of promise to it as well. And like you're, you're saying, well, why are we even here? I, I'll, give, I'll give you one thing but back on that. I used to work with a group of futurists. And one thing I figured out from that is that when it comes to the future, your best way to know about it is to study it and to have conversations about it. So you're, you're looking at things and seeing the direction that things are going makes all the world of, of, of a difference with things. So, you know, that, that's my, my two cents on it. 
Um, and you can send your characters between three, three uh, between the two different applications back and forth. So that means even though I got this zombie put, or that, excuse me, this medical worker put together now, maybe later I need to, to have her become more zombieified if she gets bitten. So I can, I can actually push updates back and forth between the two packages. And this is what my zombie looks like. And um, inside Character Creator, just a quick overview of the interface, just to give you a little idea how things are laid out. On the left-hand side, you have basically like your assets. You'll have your scene view and your, your, um, your, your content and things like that in your store. All the items that you purchase are going to be on this side. On the right-hand side are your modifying areas. So things like your textures, um, if you're going to do morphs on his face, his body, you know, things that you're doing to change it, your rigging, all that stuff's on here. This thing can do pretty much most of the stuff. I can edit the pixels and everything in here. Uh, your pose, um, although it's not as good as like Maya or Blender on that aspect, but you can export out to those and then bring things back in to a certain extent as well, especially with ZBrush. Over here, you have some panels that are pop-ups. There's pose and there's expressions. Um, so that like the way that he looks on his face, that, that was done through expressions. And the pose is the way he was set up to, uh, to work here for his uh, body. So let me go into there. And I want to show you just a little bit in here, the magic behind the scenes. Uh, this this thing is almost like a special effects workshop. I mean, when you go into these things and you look at it, you know, look at that detail. Horrifying, ain't it? <laughs> Yeah, this guy's had more than one trip around the zombie farm. Um, so what I wanted to show you with this, when I come into this, I got to select my avatar. So I go to my scene view and I select Alessandro. So I have the avatar selected. And then I want to go into this area that I have here that's called appearance. And I'm going to activate the editor. And the, the other thing too, when you're talking about like using things like this in virtual worlds, you know, this can also give ideas and spur creativity and ideas of how you could do things in other environments. I mean, a lot of times the, like, for example, Second Life, a lot of the things that they did, although it took them like a decade to get some of the things, they were following what was already being done in the gaming industry. So understanding how these things work helps towards that. I mean, it'd be nice to do this kind of stuff in world someday. Mm -hmm. So we come in here and... Um, these are different levels of makeup that are applied to this avatar. <clears throat> right now, I'm working just on the skin, not the makeup, and I'm on the head layer. So anything I do is only going to affect the head layer. There's a body layer, arms, legs, and nails. So I come down to the third one here. See this scar that's right underneath his eye, this great big three slasher? If I click this, it turns it off because that's what that is, and that's one way to tell. But I'm going to select it. And now I can come down here. If I wanted to scale this thing up, cover his entire face, I could do that. Put that back. Uh, but if I also wanted to offset it, I can move it. As you can see how it's moving towards his ear there. Hopefully you see that. And um, yep. You know, while you're doing that, Dave, just to clarify, um, Balpine Hammerer has, uh, are, are these bloody, are the blood and morphs procedural? Um, I don't know for sure they're with sliders, so I think they are procedural, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, I'm not the one that made this portion of it. It's, it's an effect that I purchased. Some of it comes with the software. Others you have to buy as a add-on to it. All right. And then, uh, and, uh, oh, yeah, yeah answer yeah. L. Yep. Yeah, for the phonemes and the visemes uh, for the English language, we're going to show that in just a minute. Right now, I'm a character creator. You'll see that when I get to iClone, because iClone is where you do all the animation. Okay. Yes, it does work with, 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 with visemes. And if you're not familiar with visemes, it's kind of like phonemes, but it's basically your mouth shapes. So instead of the letters of the alphabet, it's the actual sounds that are being made, the shapes of the sounds. Okay. So um, when, when we come down here, 
Uh, as you saw, I can move it around. I can even change the bevel. I can change the colors, all kinds of cool stuff. But you'll notice too that he becomes a naked zombie. I know that's horrible, right? <laughs> it wasn't bad enough clothes because you're just looking at this skin. And if you go to the makeup layer, you're just going to look at the makeup and you won't see the skin stuff that we just did. So it's, it's going to limit it so you can just focus on one thing at a time. So if I want to come back out of this and get back to my regular mode, I just simply uncheck this little box up here by skin that says activate editor. But I don't expect you guys to memorize this. There's no test afterwards. But I just wanted to share a little bit of the secret sauce to show, show you what things are like. And maybe it'll get you interested in technologies. And who knows, maybe it'll lead to technologies being used in other applications in the future one day. Especially, I know we have a lot of programmers that are, are looking at these things too. So, um, and then what I can do with, with the avatar is I can transfer him. I can export him to uh, send character to iPhone, or I can export it out as an FBX. I can put it into Unity, Unreal. I can send it to uh, um, which ZBrush with Gauze. Um, I can also export it out for use in Blender. So it, it has a lot of applications. Now, right now they have this thing called 3D Exchange. I won't get into this too much because it's going away, I believe, when they go into their next version of iClone and Character Creator. But right now, this is the way we have to import things in because they want um, they wanted to control things at Realusion as far as what you're allowed to export out and do you have license for it and do you have, um, um, are you a premium supporter that, gets that option to be able to export. Now, I also have to buy things with exportable rights to be able to use it. So I don't have those rights unless I pay for it. But one of the things I wanted to point out on this is sometimes when you're bringing things in, uh, even though my, my thing was saved out at 30 frames per second, for example, on Mixamo, when I brought it in, I uploaded it at 60 frames per second, because if I don't go with the defaults, it's not gonna work. So. We'll just, I don't want to get into too much of the interface here, but I'm just going to give you an overview to show you what it looks like. And that'll also give that one person that was asking earlier about the bone structure a chance to see. So this is the one from the one that I recorded, the colorful expert zombie needing pup, needs puppy brains. So we're going to import that. And this is iClone 3, 3D Exchange. So again, I get this dialog box here. It's asking 60 frames per second. I'm going to say, OK, and just say, go with all the defaults. Now, in this case, all it's doing is giving me the armature. I got to wait till the window finishes. Hopefully, I'm not going too fast for anybody. I'm trying to keep it moving. OK, so now what's in here, but the thing I found a little difficult, and I'll, I'll expand this over a little bit if I can. Uh, actually, I have to. Um, can I open this up more? No, I don't think it lets me open that window. It's trying to show you more of the bone structure, but move me spine, spine 001, spine.002, 003. I don't know if that tells you anything on your bone structure that you're looking for. Cheek. Looks like the name conventions are a little bit different than what I'm, I'm used to seeing. But um, we come down on the side here and we'll see that there are anim there's the animation. So I go here and I select the animation and now it allows me to hit play here. So I can see this is that one I did in my backyard. As you see, I'm moving around, but I'm not really moving as much as I actually did in the 3D space. I'm almost tied to one spot. Okay, but it did have a bit similar to what my motions were, but like I said, it's still early days. Okay, Mike. Yeah, it's not a made for open sim asset, no. Again, I'm looking at technology that's leading towards a future. That's not all gonna be based on open sim. I am gonna show you something about open sim in just a couple of minutes if you, if you you know, we'll want to stick around for it. Okay, so once I get this, I'd have to export it out. 
and I go to export and I pick to send it to iClone and then that will send and then export the animations. I would export that so that it gets into uh, iClone. All right, so that's 3D Exchange. Now we're getting into iClone. We'll get into the animations a little bit more that some, somebody was asking about. Um, yeah, you might need to bring it into another tool to get it to um, uh, change to the bone structure. Or sometimes what you have to do is you have to actually get in there and you have to rename the bones, you know, uh, provided the rig correlates to the same bone structure that you have. It might just be the naming conventions. But I, I do agree that it's a lot easier when everything's set to, to do it. It's just that most of the industry is not focused on open simulator right now. So um, when it comes to it, it, it's more what's used in animation and gaming that it's focused on. And um, that's where the disparity between the two some, sometimes makes it rougher for developers because it's not using the same naming conventions. It's not using the same uh, formats. You know, like I, I don't use BVH in anything aside from Open Simulator and SL. All right, so um, here for Real Illusion, iClone 7, it's very similar in its layout to what we saw in Character Creator 3 with your inputs on the one side, you know, where you're getting your content from. And then on the right-hand side is what you're doing with that content, how you're animating and things like that. So um, one of the things that I've got here is this is my iPhone 10X. And with the 10X, one of the nice features that it has, and let, let me, um, am I still sharing on your screen there, um, James? You are, let me, uh, let me switch over to that. I was, I was okay. distracted. <laughs> no, it's okay. Okay, so if you see here, this is my face on the uh, phone, okay? And let me see if that actually is working. Where's the... And while Dave's doing that, uh, okay. if you're not familiar with Zoom, there's a view option drop down uh, at the top of the window. Okay. And if you choose the side by side view, you can enlarge uh, the image that's coming from Dave's cell phone. Okay. So the iPhone 10X, they incorporated a thing called depth camera, and it gives you capabilities you don't have on other devices. I don't know if they've incorporated that yet on Android. I'm not, I don't think they have but it probably will come in time. But uh, I tap my screen, and as you can see, I have a mesh on my face now. So any movements I make, eye blinks, any kind of movements of my head is gonna be projected onto the avatar and I can record that, okay? So that's one of the nice things with the iPhone 10, but it's the only one that I know that has it, the 10 and beyond. Um, and then what it ties into is this thing called Motion Live, which is an app that I had to pay for. The one on the phone was free, but the one that was on here, you had, had to pay for. Motion Live can be used along with Live Face and that phone. Um, so, oh, and then another, another thing, we're gonna take a look here at the very top right. You'll see they have different options. We're gonna go through a couple of these. I can record my voice. Or even better than that, there's one called Aculips, which actually works with the uh, Visims. So it'll uh, record the Visims for me. Um, I can do a uh, audio file, um, or I can do text to speech, where I just put my text in there and it goes ahead and it, uh, it, it puts it in place. And then this one on the bottom here, that's the one called Live Face, which is separate. Uh, personally, I like to use the Live Face more for general movement of the head and the face and leave the actual lip syncing up here so I get it with the Vizim support. But we'll see that in a minute here. So uh, let me take you into iClone and show you. Okay, so here's my zombie scene. And I'm gonna turn, I'm gonna take my phone and just put it down right now. So I, I don't know if you wanna switch back to your regular face for right now, uh, James. So, oh, I, got it. okay. You know, and while we're switching, uh, Al Scotch asked, uh, do, can it get tongue and teeth? Um, I don't think the tongue and teeth move in the one, at least I haven't figured out a way to do that just yet. Um, it has the teeth in there and you can see it as it opens, but I'm not seeing the actual movement of the teeth and I haven't seen the movement of the tongue yet. Uh, okay. But I, it might just be that I haven't had applications to use that part yet. 
I mean, they're there. I just don't know if uh, it might have the option to actually animate that part of the geometry, but the like the um, live face, it doesn't do the tongue and teeth as far as I know for, for auto animating it. So, all right, so I go into my scene here. Again, my inputs are on the left-hand side. I'm gonna have a regular zombie. I'll show you what he looks like. Okay, there's my regular zombie and he's not, if I hit play here, you can see he's not animated at all. He's just standing there with his meat cleaver doing nothing. Um, so I can go into my content and these are ones that I imported from Mixamo before the, the class. And I'm gonna just drag this one and put it on him. And now when I hit play, you can see he's going to move around a bit, just a, a very slow idle. Okay. And it's only going to go for a portion of the time, though you can go in there and loop it um, if it's loopable. One thing you'd like to do with loopable animation is make sure your first frame and your last frame are the same so that it makes it continuous without it being um, um, ha having a point where it jumps. So um, we go back up here to the Palisandro. That's the one that I was making. That's an, actually an earlier version. I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do with him in a little bit to make him a little bit more gruesome. But I got the zombie in here and I want to put some of these uh, animations. So normally you're gonna start, you'll have this stuff here where it's taking you to 3D exchange and stuff. There's a tab at the top for animating. Once I have the avatar selected, I can do things for the body here. I can do things for the face. There's morphs, there's plugins, the plugin motion live we're gonna see in a minute here. So I'm gonna go down here to the bot, to the, excuse me, to the facial. Well, actually let me put, before I do anything else, let me put that same zombie or that same idle animation on him. You know, just so that we've got something to start off with. And uh, make sure that you see where you're at the, in the time zone because we're at the timeline, because wherever you are is where it's going to start uh, recording it more or less to put in things called keyframes. Um, yeah, Bento is specific to SL, not to the industry. So, no, you're not going to find Bento. It's not going to be called the same things. Um, so we come here and we do create a script and this comes up. Uh, all right. So first one I'm going to do is I'm going to do an audio file. Um, no, I'm sorry. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do an Acculips. I'm going to do an Acculips. No, I'm going to do an audio file. Let's, let's do an audio file. So I'm just going to record audio. So I click on this one. Hi. Hold on a sec. I'm sorry. I should have scripted my notes a little bit better on this one. Let's create script, text to speech, audio file, script file, Acculips. Oh, record voice. I'm going to do record voice. I'm sorry. I skipped that one while I was looking at the screen. So, okay. So I'm just going to record my voice. This is just going to be using my microphone. So here we go. All right. Zombies of the world unite. Here we go. Zombies of the world unite. And I can play it back. Zombies of the world unite. I don't like it, I can start it over again. I'm just gonna say okay for now. And I can hit play and you'll see that it's gonna be lip synced already. Zombies of the world, unite! And you know, this is a starting point. It's not perfect, but it's a starting point to get your lip sync going. You might go in there and do additional things to push it a little further. Sometimes too, you have settings on the tabs that you can set to push it a little bit more. Um, so at this point, I want to do another one. I'm going to go here to create a script. I want to show you, you can do text to speech. All right. So I thought, I thought to do something a little bit more Cruella de Villish here. Uh, bring me those puppies. 
and I'll just put one exclamation point. And I can say here, it's, bring me those puppies. Okay. Uh, Corella, I want to go female in this one. So I'm going to pick a different voice. And if I had additional voice libraries, I could use those as well. Bring me those puppies. Okay. I, I think her pitch would be a little bit higher. I think her speed would be a little bit higher. Let's hear it again. Bring me those puppies. Okay. So I think that's pretty good. I say, okay. And now it applied that. So let's see how it is. Go all the way back. We'll hear them both. Zombies of the world, unite! Bring me those puppies. Okay. So I can scrub it and see where it's at. I think we're good there. All right, and then uh, the next one I'm going to do is going to be another create script. But for this one, we're going to do the one that guy was asking about earlier, or the person was asking about earlier about with the uh, Vizims which are basically mouth shapes. So we're gonna do a thing called Aculips. We come in here and that, uh, that video file that I did earlier where I was talking about zombie needing puppy brains for my little doggy. We're gonna go here, zombie needs puppy brains. And here we can hear it. Ah, zombie needs puppy brains. Okay, so I hit generate text. What this does is it places the text underneath the audio so I can see where each word is. But you're going to see something uh, unusual here. It's not going to quite be the right things. And you can also see there are some things in red that it doesn't quite understand. Okay. So I can see that this isn't quite right. Um, it should say zombie. And then needs, not needs, puppy brains, not braves. And exclamation point. And then I'm going to say brains, comma, brains. Uh, just wipe all that out. Just the brains, comma, brains, comma, brains. Okay. And what I do is now that I've typed it out, and then another way to do this too, like I did one the other day with a singer, I took their um, their their um, closed captioning and I copied and I pasted it in here after I linked in the um, Aculips on it. And then I had to still go through because closed captioning isn't perfect and make some adjustments to it. So I've got that all set. I say align. Let's see how that turns out. And we can preview it to see before we actually accept it. So I hit the play button. Ah, zombie needs puppy brains. As you saw there, it was a bit off because I did an ah at the beginning that I forgot about. So I come to the very beginning here and I'm just gonna put that aha moment. And let's hit align again. Okay, and now we're gonna play it. Ah, zombie needs puppy brains. Brains, 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 brains. And then I do have another ah at the end there that I don't really need. So I'm gonna go to just before that and they have like a beginning and end marker, just like if you're editing video. I had that one and the, the first one's put at the very beginning. And it's good to go now. It's got everything it needs to have. I say apply, and now it's in there. Let's see the whole thing together. Zombies of the world, unite! Bring me those puppies. <sighs> Zombie needs puppy brains. Brains, 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 brains. Okay. That uh, looks like it still brought the sound in on that, but I can clip that off afterwards. But And I can move these things around if I have to as well. But I can also do some body motion on this. So like, let's say at some point I want, you know, he talks about unite. Zombies of the world, unite. Okay, so we got unite here. I'm gonna take his hands and I'm gonna mirror it. 
And I'm going to go to record. And space bar. Okay. And then I'm going to go a little further down. And I'm going to hit record again. Space bar. Okay. So I just added some motion. And what's really cool in the new version of this that's coming out in uh, early next year, you'll be able to pilot this like you do an avatar in a place like Second Life or Open Simulator and record your motion capture of the avatar. So you get to work like you're just playing a game or in a virtual world and, it, and you can record yourself and do motion capture inside of a virtual environment. I think that's so cool. So we can see this now as we play it out. Zombies of the world, unite! Bring me those puppies. And obviously, this is very rough animation. You'd have to do smoothing of it and things, the curves and things like that afterwards. Which, by the way, is you come up into the window here, there's a workspace for animation that brings all that up for you. So that you have your timeline and you can see everything and work your curve editor and everything. Uh, control 2, we'll go back. Um, so uh, the final thing I wanted to show you in here was with, with the animations is Motion Live. This is the one where I'm actually working with my, um, my camera. So uh, if you want to put the camera back on, James. Okay, so you're seeing in James's view, this is off my iPhone 10. Um, so I get this, I have to set it up, make sure the server connection is right. And then I have to pick which character since I have two zombies in the scene. And I say go live face. And now I have a preview and a record button. And you basically you can preview it to test it first to see. And then you can do the record when you're ready. And you can use the space bar to actually start it. So what I'm going to do with here is I'm just looking to add a little bit of face mo facial movement and head movement to it so that I can make it feel a little bit more real. OK? So we come into here and. Make sure that you can see my face good enough in the view. All right, I'm going to hit record and the space bar. Zombies of the world, unite! Bring me those puppies. <sighs> Zombie needs puppy brains. Brains, 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 brains. <sighs> okay. So uh, we can see what the final piece is like. I close out of that. All right, so um, we're going to go back a little bit. Set up the scene here, OK? And are we all the way back to the beginning? Um, OK, Control-2, make it go full screen. Oh, I'm sorry, Control-7, rather. Okay, here you go. Zombies of the world, unite! Bring me those puppies. <sighs> Zombie needs puppy brains. Brains, 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 brains. Uh, back to control too. So, I mean, this wasn't a, you know, with the intent to make something that looked finished or anything when it came to, to this part. I just wanted to show you the techniques of the technology so you can see how things work a little bit. Um, but um, I'm going to show you a more finished piece in a little bit. Um, but let's get back. We had been, we did have some questions about the open simulator, and I wanted to share some, something with you on that as well. Let's go to that one. So um, from what I heard from, um, oh geez, I can't remember now. Who, who shared the data with me, James? Oh, Kayaker. Kayaker mentioned that Allies wrote a, a Blender plug, he's working on it, um, that can write the ANIM file formats for animation files. So this is useful if you're doing work for the virtual worlds of Second Life or Open Simulator. Um, you can download it at the link that we have here. Um, in the past, you could only do this kind of thing through Avastar. So this allows you to export things out from Blender in the .anim file format instead of doing it in BVH. So that's a pretty big improvement. 
the that anim format is used by I believe Autodesk uses that that one as well. So it's used in industry. Um, so um, information about it is is listed there in the background on the anim format in SL. And then of course there's the link for Blender if you're not familiar with the software. What it basically does is you see here in the um, file pull down menus, you'll have a section for OSSL that allows you to do different things with the uh, rig. So good work on that. And nice to see them doing things that are actually being used inside of Blender as well. Um, now, while, while we're talking motion capture, it's also good when you're working with animation to understand the basics of what makes good animation. And there are what are called the 12 principles of animation here. Um, I've given you some links to learn more about them. Uh, you have Disney's Nine Old Men. These were, Disney was the one that pretty much set the standards for what is animation for characters and animation in general. So uh, uh, a lot of these uh, things were brought into techniques, these 12 principles, which are also outlined in this book called The Illusion of Life, which is by Frank Thomas and Alan Johnston. So I highly recommend, you know, checking that out. And these links get into it. I'll show you a brief one, but I'm not going to get into it too much. I just wanted to, get, you know, show, show you where the stuff is so you can learn more. But like, for example, th this is on Disney's, uh, the Disney.com site. They're talking squash and stretch. And you probably remember this as a kid seeing the cartoons that were over-exaggerated, you know, stretch, stretchy and squashy. Uh, staging, like when you see the bunny take off here from Bambi, the bunny ramp, it, it pulls back before it leaps forward. So there's anticipation that something's gonna happen, you know? So that's a big point. And then you got staging, and I'm not gonna get into all the specifics, straight ahead and pose to pose. A lot of times I'll do pose to pose animation where I'm going from one strong character pose to another strong character pose, and then uh, working the in-betweens to make it smooth, make it feel right, the timing of it. But you'll, you'll see all that stuff on there. And then the other one I wanted to show you, I got this from my animation instructor in school and I thought it was really good. This is on Tumblr, the 12 principles. Nice thing with this one is it gives you a visualization of all 12 of these principles right on your screen. So, you know, you can really see how the squashing and the stretching is. Um, you can see how the anticipation back and forth, solid drawing, how it, making things look like it's 3D, even though it's on a 2D screen, you know, makes a big difference. Um, so, uh, I encourage you to explore that, um, at, as you have an opportunity to, uh, let's go to the next slide. And then I give you some resources here. Uh, you got the link for Git move me. If you want to try that out, like I said, it's free to use for right now. I don't know how long it'll stay free to use though, because he is looking to make it into a paid for one eventually. Mixamo, I believe is free with an Adobe membership. Uh, Real Illusion, um, um, if, if you're interested in the software, it's a little bit more expensive and you have to buy a lot of content. I've probably invested about 10,000 in it already personally, but for the kind of work I do, I use that. Um, animation books, uh, these are some that I really think are, are, are some, some of the really good ones. Uh, one of my main instructors, oops, let's go back, sorry, I mean to click. One of my main instructors for animation in, at the Art Institute, he used this one and he knew the guy, Eric Goldberg as well. Um, the animation survival kit is a nice one. There's also a set of videos for it that are good. And there's even an I, I, iOS app for it. I don't know if it's still on the store or not, but um, this is done by Richard Williams. He's the guy, if you remember Who Framed Roger Rabbit, he was the one that created that movie. And he's also done a lot of other animations. Um, um, that you've probably seen growing, growing up as a child. Like if you remember the, uh, I think he was the one that did The Witch and uh, Bugs Bunny, if you remember that one. Um, then there's the illustration of life. And so some good resources to, to use there. So that's pretty much it. I just wanted to, you know, wet your palate, get you interested. You know, like I said, some of these technologies, I think we're gonna see really take off now that there's a metaverse focus in a lot of things and big money's being spent. I think you're gonna see computer vision really take off. And, um, you know, at this point, I think we can probably close off the YouTube stream as we go into the VIP after party for those that re registered early. That sounds great, David. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you to everybody watching. 